We're in Novena, Chicago. This is our first show from Milwaukee. We're actually outnumbered by Milwaukee. Woo! We have a lyric sheet in the back that explains all of our lyrics content. So I figured I wouldn't waste your time with it. Um, yeah. Birthright. All right. All right, so this next song we're playing is about my personal issues with uh, depression, and it actually stems back to the first time I realized I was going to hell, which was, you bear with me for this story, it was, uh, I was in about fifth grade or sixth grade, and me and my friend Nick Poole used to go to this place, the Chuck Wagon, every day and eat the Nikki special, which was a burger with gyro's meat on top of it. And then we'd go to this place off the record and try to get the guy to give us uh, Metallica promo posters, but he'd just give us like sticks promo posters or whatever. So, there was this kid, Jerry Dapier, in my grade with me, and he was like, he was legally blind, and he was cross-eyed, and we called him Jerry Diaper, and it was just the worst. <laughs> you gotta hear his fast story about me, but... <laughs> So me and my friend Nick Poole decided we wanted to go out and eat and get some records or whatever. So we made a fake magazine in the lines of uh, Circus Magazine, but it was really shitty because we just cut out pages of Circus and then drew pictures of like Axl Rose in. And uh, we put in a cheap trick tape live at the Budokan and sold it to the kid for something like 12 bucks. And then went out to eat and uh, went to the record store. And it's funny because where the kid actually ended up was uh, when I was like maybe 15 or 16, his family was forcibly, like there was a petition signed to get his family to leave uh, our town because he was taking bass naked in the public fountain all summer. So, I don't know. <laughs> I'd be tossing it. Uh, so this is actually about, not about Jerry Dapier, but it's about my own personal issues with it. Give me a riff that <laughs> Alright, and I'm gonna ask my friend Money from Race Trader, Money Trader, to come up and yeah. sing a part.
Okay. you want you should go for it and it takes me back to where what's up where are we going this one time of bank crying. no it takes no. me back <laughs> it takes me back to when right? i was out in syria we were having fucking car war back and forth whipping, whipping shit out the window at each other yeah, and of course the van has a little bit more of a fortress as to it so you can just pull up right long inside them until you want to throw it and uh, so I'm throwing stuff out the window, sitting shotgun in the van at their car. <clears throat> They're doing little commando attacks on us. And I throw like a styrofoam thing of whipped cream, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is going to be my best one. I'm holding it out the window and the whipped cream's like blowing in the car and like, <laughs> his car was fucking there. Everybody hated me. And, um, <laughs> Just wait till you hear what happens. Okay. So I'm like all pissed off. So I gotta take it to the next level, the one you're not supposed to ever take it to, and that's when I decide to pee in the cup, right? <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there, and I don't mean to be all graphic, but it was one of those ones where you, the whole area gets hot, we're down here, and, and uh, it comes out like just brown, and it's just like warm, and the car smells, and everybody's just unhappy, and so I'm like, all right, we gotta get them. I throw it out the window, and I'm like, I don't know if it went in, and it hits it, and it, it hits, it hits his shoulder, because he's driving, and splashes in the guy's, the back seat, all over this guy's face, and they kind of like, slow down, and they're like, and then they, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it went in his mouth, and they pulled over, and we're like, where the hell are those guys, and he ended up throwing up, and he was supposed to be in this band, and he's not in it, because he fucking hates me, <laughs> but, okay, so that was about how, Sacrifice can get you places like piss in your face, but then it comes back to I was sitting there thinking about it today on the car ride over and I was like you guys remember Karate Kid and there's a guy that does the helicopter kicks in it I don't know if you guys remember it, but he does all these helicopter kicks and when I was little I was like that dude's putting in all this fucking work and he gets beat out, you know, and little Daniel LaRusso fucking wins it or whatever and I guess sacrifice doesn't always pay off, but the song, whatever, just fucking play <laughs>
the basement for eight weeks. So I'm drinking water and it's all fucking me up. It sounds pretty retarded. And the other ones make me look great, but this one makes me look really bad. So, this story is actually about money traders. <laughs> so, this dude's date, this, this guy's dating this girl this summer. And uh, he was having a conversation with her because one of his friends had dated her and he was saying like, you know, it's, I got something really weird to tell you because you're going to say how weird it was to kiss her after his friend did or something. And she starts all like freaking out on him and she's like, she's like, what is it? Like, I don't know, what are you, what, what is it, are you gay or something? And so he didn't really want to be dating her. So he decided that this was his perfect escape from the relationship. And he's like, yeah, you have, I think I was only into you because you have short hair and you kind of look like a boy. So I actually am gay. And he got out of this relationship with her. But it may or may not have been him. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we should Zach Morris story we should, 101. We should just fucking play. Alright, but the moral of the story is that sometimes casual sex is not the best the best way to go. And uh, Bunny's number is 84. So. Uh, yeah, but casual sex Ouch. isn't always the best thing. I've Ouch. had it in my life before, and it's not a good thing. And I'd, if everybody was here that I'd had casual sex with, I'd like to apologize. Too many, too many. Tommy, I got, I got, got a real Tommy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you all play the same. <laughs> All right, let's just fucking play. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
first show, and this is like our fucking fourth lineup. <coughs> so, <laughs> nobody finds that unusual. But I never played bass before in my life. He just wanted to be in a band, boy band, and he didn't make the cut. <laughs> and so, here, here we are. Um, we have lyric seats in the back because I've pretty much been jagging around saying whatever I want because me and Zeps were drinking at the bar. <laughs> but thank you very much, Zeps, for letting us borrow his head and his guitar, which his guitar has never used. And I'd like to put this song out to my friend who's in town. <laughs> and his name's Ryan Downey. Keep talking, and sexy if tits. <laughs> and if you, if anyone saw the James Bond, I know nobody watched it, like, watches it with that new dude, but there's a, I think it was like two times ago, there was this big media mogul, and he like controlled like, uh, the way the world was going, and complete media, and I just wanted to say that that's the archetype for who that man is, because he is Mr. Media, and we love playing with Ryan Downey. Zayo is good, and they're playing as well, and so is Hunt West Taylor, and who everybody actually came out for the story so far. Really good. And we somehow got Freddie Prince Jr. in the band. Nope. Okay, so we're gonna play this. Okay, so this is gonna be our last song, and this is the one that they've all kind of sounded like Damnation, but this one, like, pretty much almost is a Damnation song, but it's kind of like a little bit of a Damnation song. So you guys should fucking mosh to it because you're all standing in the front and just fucking breathe. 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 I was on, I was hanging out with Brothers Keep on tour, and the band broke down, and uh, me and Mike Ski were hanging out in the, the mall in Texas, and we were eating Subway, and this is like my third story that has to do with excrement, but, <laughs> okay, we were eating, we were eating in fucking Subway, and we were done, he's like, yeah, I gotta go shit, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, and he goes and does it, and I'm sitting there, and I, I'm getting like the fucking dead stomach, like I got AIDS from the sandwich or something, and, and, and it's the kind that's just painful, and nothing will make it go away. And if you get punched in the stomach, you die. And uh, Mike comes back and he's like, yeah, dude, I was walking in and it just like smelled like shit. And I was sitting on the toilet and I looked under and there was just, there was just, I heard this like guy like he was cleaning off the back of his legs and then there was like some pants and shoes like in a pile on the floor or something. And, and uh, well, dude, I should fucking drink. And, uh, and, and so, uh, he comes out and he, I'm like, yeah, dude, uh, that's cool. I'm gonna go and try to shit this paint out of my stomach because there's nothing better than doing fucking Texas. Um, <laughs> all right, and uh, I I go in there and it just smells like this dude's been painting the wall with his shit on the way in. <laughs> and I get into the toilet and I'm like, uh, like nothing, whatever. <laughs> we'll skip that part. And uh, and I hear the hand dryer going on and off a bunch of times. I'm like, what the fuck is this doing, dude? He's like. Some fucking ghetto dude like cooking shit out there or something. And uh, we, I go out there and there's this like little man like, and, and like I'm little and this man's like a little man. And he's like hunched over the hand dryer and like he he turns around and he's like bringing out his underwear. Uh, and I turn back around he kind of bends over and he's got this like lime green stain on the back of his pants. And I'm like, oh, man. So I come running out and uh, I'm like, boy, boy. Get the fucking camera, we gotta take a picture of this dude when he comes out. And if anybody knows me, I'm that big of an asshole, I will take a picture of that. And uh, so that was just added to make the movie cooler. <laughs> I, uh, so <laughs> so he, he comes out and, and, and he walks up and he hugs this girl. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't take a picture of this because I just wanted to kill myself. And uh, they're walking around and everything. And uh, we see him across the mall like uh, two hours later because we had nothing to do. And, and he's still walking with the girl, and we're like, dude, go home, you shit your pants! Go home, we're screaming at him. He kind of like turns around like he kind of can tell, but he doesn't really. And, uh, the moral of that story, <laughs> there is no fucking moral, but the story is it's about how every time I go out on the road or go out and do whatever, I come back and more of my friends are growing up, and I feel like they've sold out sometimes, even though I guess they really haven't. Like Newstead says, sold out every house, to see the house. <laughs> but uh <laughs> and and this song is about how wherever I go I always come, end up coming back home 
and I love all you guys and all these dudes. And Charlie and Chris Deadstop were originally supposed to sing for this band, but then Dan like knew we were doing a rock band, so he like moved to California to meet us out there, or whatever, uh, to do the do the band out there. Unfortunately, he didn't tell us until like yesterday or whatever. So we're playing without him. And this goes out to um, all the people in the fitness center. And Amy, I'm supposed to go to prom with you. I'm not really 17. <laughs> All right, and everybody else, Jim Grimes and Carrie. Carrie postponed Sword. her like teeth. Yeah, well, I'll pick up right there. I'll be there. <laughs> they postponed, postponed her. I don't know. She's here. And uh, Isaac and uh, Admiral <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Chuck and Marissa and. Evolution and indie kids in the coups who have a class with and ran across this <laughs> He didn't really, that was me. <laughs> I, did, I ran across this Let's just play the song because you guys should laugh for this song. And this fucking dude, because he's up front. This girl. Zach Morris gets away from Mr. Belding again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, Sage, for your energy to master Dale and Burrick on the choice of art. I'm going to do it.